F and F Q and A 31. We've got questions about gossip in the salon, Yelp, creating balance in our life, and how to be more efficient with our guests. Check it out. Ask away. It's F and F Q and A. Hey everyone, welcome to FNF Q&A 31. I'm Benjamin J, and I greatly appreciate you hanging out with us this week. Um, during this episode, there may be some random noises because we have some construction going on upstairs, but that's the loft life. Sometimes you don't get to control everything that you hear. But um, we got some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, I'm happy to announce that we are going to have the lovely, amazing Miss Nina Kovner with us here in Chicago on May 15th and she's going to be doing her creating awesome workshop if you don't know her you're missing out there's something wrong and so uh, you should check out her website passionsquared.net you can also follow her passion squared on instagram and facebook and everything she is amazing there's only going to be 15 spots for that class so if you're interested in hanging out with her I highly recommend doing so sooner rather than later. And um, we have a class coming up on the East Coast for the first time, but I don't know if I can tell you where yet. So I'll have to tell you on the next episode. Um, and what else did we do last week? We put out uh, the second P-list, the second P-list episode about personnel. Uh, and then the, I guess the third one will be up this Thursday. So uh, I hope you guys are checking that out, a whole new series, and I really think it's going to help salons and business owners really get a better understanding of, of what goes into it. Or if you're thinking about opening a business, what, what are some aspects that you should be thinking about? So uh, that's all the new stuff that we got going on. Um, let's just answer some questions. How do you guys handle a guest who wants to gossip about another salon? I have a feeling that this probably happens more often than not, unfortunately. Um, perhaps somebody had a bad experience at another salon, or they have a friend that had a bad experience somewhere, and uh, they just can't help themselves to bring it up and talk to you about it because you are now doing their hair. Uh, it, it's my belief that you should never, ever talk bad about the competition, even if you know that it is bad. Uh, I always try and give every, every previous stylist or every previous salon the benefit of the doubt. You know, uh, I, I see what they wanted to do, it just didn't come out right, or oh, there may have been some sort of miscommunication. Um, at the same time, I never tell my current guests that they're wrong. So there's sort of that bridging the gap of, I'm never going to put down the other place, but I'm also never going to um, correct the guest that's currently sitting in my chair to make them feel like, you know, you're wrong, this actually was a good haircut, or something like that. Um, I, I think that it just it goes to further help make your place then feel like a very positive, um, happy, good energy type of salon. And I think that it reflects very nicely on you as if you just don't participate in that conversation uh, and don't let it become part of your, your salon experience of putting down another salon because that would be awful if it happened to you. I'm thinking about my guest who came and was like, I went and got a haircut. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, so we've had the opposite of this happen, um, where we had a guest that came to us that was previously going to another salon. She was talking about doing color, maybe getting a haircut, and then she mentioned that she was thinking about coming and doing color at Hair Loft. So then her stylist starts talking about, oh my gosh, when I was in school, I wanted to work at the hair loft, and they're amazing. Ben's great, Christian's great, you gotta go see, like, and she starts raving about us, and, and basically the guest at that point was like, well, she talked you guys up so highly, I thought I should be coming here. So you really do gotta be careful about what you say about the competition, whether you're going to be um, down on them or build them up. Um, Probably just better to take a more positive, neutral tone. I want to encourage my guests to write Yelp reviews. What are some ways I can talk about Yelp with my guests? I am a huge believer in Yelp. I know that a lot of people, I think it mostly because they're, they kind of misunderstand the platform. Um, if you do misunderstand the platform, we have put up a number of really good how-tos on basically how to utilize Yelp. And, and make it grow for you. For us, Yelp is our number one source of new traffic. All right, so I, I think I mentioned on the last episode something about business cards, there was a question. Uh, you know, you could hand out 100 business cards and you might get a couple of people to come in off of those. 
I'm a much bigger believer in using Yelp or Google Places or um, those type of review platforms. And I like the ones that are not tied into your booking software, to be honest, because I think that Yelp and Google actually do have a better reputation than some platform that I've never heard of before. And so I think it's just, it's a shift in dialogue, but it's essentially the same thing that we've always done. I would love it if you'd recommend me to your friends and family. I would love it if you would leave some feedback on Yelp. Or I would love it if you took a moment to share your salon experience on Google. I don't think that it's so, um, such like a faux pas that people are like, what? Like, uh, why would I do that? I think nowadays v people are very much used to sharing online and the potential of somebody giving you uh, a recommendation to two friends, maybe you'd get both of them, maybe you'd get one of them, but if they put their review online for everybody to see who's searching for your business, now you have the potential to increase that one good word of mouth review exponentially. And so I would highly recommend asking for that, especially if you are in an area that is tech savvy and does seem to be into the internet online culture, then I would say absolutely embrace it and just simply ask. Our salon has a rule we're not allowed to do hair on the side. What is your policy on it? We do have a similar policy to this. So uh, I, instead of going into necessarily the details, because yes, we don't, we don't allow or want our stylists doing hair outside of the salon. But the reason behind it, I think, is more important. Um, from a business owner's perspective, when we hire, we are going to put people through a training program as well as we've spent a lot of time and put a lot of effort into building a reputation for the business. We've done those things so that then as a stylist, you have the ability to go out and say, I'm a hair loss stylist, you guys know our reputation, you should come into the salon and do our hair. If said stylist is using that reputation and that education to say, hey, I work at the hair loft, but we're closed on Sundays and Mondays. You should come and see me. I can come to your house. We could do it there. That to me is kind of taking the investment that I've made and just throwing it under the bus, right? The sole purpose of building people is so that we can build a business. Now I know that some people will say, well, my salon doesn't do enough education or I pay for all my own classes. I get all that, but at the same time, why do you want to be doing more work when you're off of work? You know, I think that this, this also does become just personally a part of boundaries where you need to be able to say no is no. Instead of just looking, I think a lot of times people just think about it as like, well, I can make a little extra money, I can make some cash. The whole point of having a career is so that this is when you do your work. If you want to be a hairstylist in the salon, get people to come and see you in the salon. What, if you want to be freelance, just go and do freelance and maybe start your own business and just do it that way. But to me, as a business owner, if I'm investing in my team, I need to see the, uh, the return on that investment financially so that the business can continue to grow. Do you find it difficult to find balance between work and professional life? In what ways do you give yourself balance? Um, balance is an, is an interesting topic. Um, we, we, we often say in our classes that uh, balance is created between two opposing forces. So this concept of work-life balance would mean that any time that I was working, I wasn't enjoying life, or any time I was living, I couldn't be at work. And so I think that there is um, a bit of a, um, I don't know, misguidance, I guess, would be the best way to, for me to say it. Um, but like, like the thought is wrong a little bit. I really thoroughly enjoy what I do. You know, it's, it's the only way that you're going to be able to do it a lot and do it often. Um, are there times that I, I don't work? Yeah. I, you know, I like watching football on Sundays. I love hanging out with my friends. Um, but to me, trying to create what I want for my life and for my family, that is really the most important thing. Uh, my friends, they understand that I put in a lot of hours, so they are always going to be there for me, which I always appreciate. But to me, the idea that like, oh, I can't do that or I don't want to do this because, you know, I want to live, can't work, all that kind of stuff, it just doesn't fit, it, it just doesn't fit in my my thought process for what I want life to be. Now that being said, I'm only 29 and I don't have any kids. So uh, if I was in a different position, maybe my answer would be slightly different. But at this point, um, I'm, I'm cool with where I'm at.
What steps would you take to talk to a stylist who is consistently running behind on finishing their nests? Running on time is an important aspect of being able to be productive in the salon, and it becomes such a little thing that becomes such a big annoyance. You know, I think that everybody has the experience of going to the, to the dentist or the doctor, and you get there for your 12.30, but the doctor's 12.30 is actually like 1.15, so, but you got there 15 minutes early anyway, so now you've basically waited like practically an hour. So it, it, it adds up and it can be really annoying really quickly. Um, I would say, if you have somebody that is consistently running behind, uh, and not just kind of, well, she had that one guest that had hair for enough of three different people, or the person came in as a basic color, but they really wanted an entire color correction, there will always be those situations. But if it's, if it's there consistently, every time they have a haircut, they're scheduled for 45 minutes and it's taking them an hour, then we would need to try and, and figure out well, what are the wasted motions going on here? There's something about how they're cutting the hair that they're going through too many steps. And I know that we all remember back when we started school, that first haircut took us three hours because we combed it 11 million times. And so oftentimes it's just about being more efficient. And so where can we find better efficiencies for them to be able to do it uh, uh, more effectively and get through the haircut a little bit quicker? Um, I would also look and see if maybe just generally the scheduling isn't the right pace for that person. You know, uh, I know a lot of places they like to push the amount of time. We book our stylist uh, 45 minutes for cut and style. That includes the shampoo. If it's a new guest, we would add an extra 15 minutes onto that so that we could do a style profile. But I, I know some places, they, they want to push it to 30 minutes or even 15 to 20 minutes sometimes. And I just think that, for especially if this is a new stylist, but I think that that's kind of a pace that is really hard to keep up. And so maybe the pace of the salon is just not right for them. But the, the most effective way to do this is to just sit down and talk with that stylist and try and figure out what seems to be the challenge for them, because they may already know too where they are getting caught up uh, in the process of doing their, doing their work. So this was episode 31. Um, I really appreciate uh, everybody watching. Any comments or sharing, uh, I love those. So I would love to see more of them. Um, as always, you can follow me online. I will be more than happy to engage with the guys, answer any questions either on the show or off the show. And you can always follow Form and Function online as well. Uh, please check out the P-List series. Our, uh, our new video will be up on Thursday. I think you will really, really enjoy it. And other than that, I think until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.